Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. Here we are in the countryside on our way to the hard up in Kurihashi Kazo, Saitama, Japan. And it was a lovely day, nice and sunny, and I was hoping to find some glorious stuff at the hard up. That's just a little snippet. And because the days are short during the autumn and winter months, we have to hot dash on out there so we don't lose the light. And don't forget retro underscore rewire. This is my Instagram account where I post a lot of exclusive content. So follow me there to, so you don't miss a beat. And then look at these pathways on the way there. A lot of this, ha you know, you're going to see a lot of overgrowth, which is kind of exciting sometimes because it kind of feels like a little bit of trailblazing. And then here I am just kind of taking a break. Now, this was about in total, I want to say just under 20 miles. I brought my bike out here. It is a folding bike and you can't take your bike on the train. You just have to have like a, a specialty bag. And then here are the airless tires that are featured on my bike, which is definitely going to be essential. So if you're out here, make sure to bring like a repair kit in case you get a flat. Let people know where you're going and make sure not to forget your water. In fact, I need to add like the little attachment so I can carry my water bottle more conveniently on the bike itself. But here's another pathway, which... You know, look at this overgrowth. You know, I was kind of just blazing through here. I would have been going faster, but just because of the, you know, like I have the camera in hand, but there's all these bl bugs flying, the little overgrowth of plants that are just kind of swatting me in the face. And there's a lot of webbing in there that's kind of hard to see. But typically when you're going through these, uh, these kind of pathways, it's not going to be surprising to see like a few bugs on you. So just be mindful of that if you are uh, sensitive to that. As for me, I'm just going to keep going. I don't, I don't really mind it. Just blow or dust them off, whatever. And then here we have this little beautiful bridge. And I forget the name of this river, this creek, but it's a little bit dried up. Uh, I'm sure during, uh, during the springtime, it's going to be a little bit more lively. But there were a few fish in there as well as like a few um, like, uh, like heron type birds. But here we are making our way. Now, these roads are super narrow and they are, they're not one way, okay? So, it's going to be like traffic coming down uh, both ways. So, just be mindful of that. But the great thing about these roads is that they're seldom in use. And there are going to be a lot of convenience stores. As a matter of fact, I made a stop on my way back, uh, back to the station after I had filmed at the hard off. And definitely don't forget the bottle of water. Never mind the snacks here. But here in my reflection, I'm just kind of trying to show my bag as this thing was full um, after I made my purchases. And that's going to be one of the things to keep in mind. If you do decide to bike ride out here, you know, bring the bike out here, you're not going to be able to buy like loads of consoles and games just because it might be a little bit difficult to get those home. Unless you go to the convenience store and you happen to have a box, you can get that shipped uh, directly to your door, to your hotel, whatever. And again with the little narrow roads now be be be, be careful um, you don't want to be listening to like music on your headphones in full blast because you know there's a lot of people a lot of elderly folk too that are just going down these roads and they're going pretty fast themselves and you want to make sure that you have like uh all your senses about you so i definitely don't recommend you know blasting the the headphones while you're out here but nonetheless here's like a little residential area nice houses here definitely spacious compared to what you're going to see in Tokyo. And the one on the left, absolutely stunning here. This beautiful house with this lawn. Look at that. It's kind of like uh, what I'm used to seeing back home in the States. And then another little narrow bridge. Again, that's going to be, this is a two-way uh, two street there. And then one of the things to keep in mind too is, is definitely take breaks, have your water, and I don't recommend coming out here or riding your bike during the summer because it is absolutely brutal. And when you arrive at your destination, you're going to be panting and super, super sweaty. And that's not how <laughs> that's, that's definitely not how I like to shop, you know, feeling that way. But anyhow, let's go ahead and hit the, the fast forward here because we are arriving at the destination, which is going to be this hard off off house combo. Definitely, uh, or this was this was one of the first locations that I filmed at, and it's been about a year since I last came here. Um, the last time was about this time this year. I rode my bike and I just uh, created a little short video for uh, my Instagram feed. But definitely cool, lovely bike ride. Here's the old Dahon International, uh, featuring its uh, airless tires, which are super super convenient. Let one th one less thing to worry about. 
All right, y'all. So let's get things underway. We're going to start off at the showcase. And at a glance, we can see quite a bit of handhelds as well as a lot of software and DVD collections down at the bottom. But we have Aladdin there for 5,000 yen for the GBA, 2,000 for Sonic Advance. And that one has full English language support. As a matter of fact, I produced a few videos about Japanese games that have a full on English language and I will be expanding that. But here we have a Pokemon game for 10,000 yen front and center. We have Heavy Barrel at 3,000, Prison Break at 3,000. And then in the back, I'm not sure if it's a PC FX or PC Engine game, but that's coming in at 5,000 yen next to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Golden Axe for the PC Engine. But um, JoJo at 7,000, a bit high there. We have Salamander for 6,000 and then 5,400 yen for Silent Hill 2 with the extra Born From A Wish scenario. Now that foily cover version is definitely going up in value, but the Greatest Hits version is still reasonably priced. And then we have Shinobi for the Saturn, which I believe was about 3,000 yen, if I remember correctly. And then Led Zeppelin's um, The Song Remains the Same on vinyl. And then we have the Homeboy here with 88 built-in games. And I've been seeing more and more um, clone systems, and I kind of want to experiment or at least buy one just to kind of test them out. But 7,000 yen for the GBA SP, which isn't too, too bad. Now, mind you, that's going to be before sales tax. Here we have a few Mega Drive games, which we'll come back to. But in the back, they had Dracula X for the Super Famicom for 7,700 yen with sales tax. And not too, too bad of a price. You can definitely find it cheaper. And Rockman, you can definitely find cheaper. That's coming in at 15,000 yen, which is definitely grossly overpriced. I'm not sure why they have it so high. When you can definitely find it for as low as 3,000, sometimes even 2,000 if you're lucky. But here we have our Switch lights, which, you know, the Switch light, you could definitely also find cheaper in Akihabara. So I definitely wouldn't be traveling out here for a Switch light. But here we have a uh, we have Bonk 3 for 5,000 yen, and then next to that is going to be Castlevania 3 or Akumajo Densetsu coming in at the same price. That Bonk 3 for 5,000, it's a shame that it's missing the, the instruction manual. But here we have G Darius for 10,000 yen. Now, the, the cover there is just a little flimsy printout, which is unfortunate. But here we have Castlevania 4 for 3,000 yen. And then they had like the one Neo Geo Fatal Fury 2 game and that was coming in at 5,000. Now around the corner, we have all the hardware. And they had quite a bit of PlayStation 4. And the PlayStation 4 prices, whether they're in the box or loose, were starting at 15,000 yen. Here we have the bundle for Final Fantasy 7 Remake for 22,000. And we have this beautiful PS2 Slim for 10,000. I'm telling you, the PS2 Slims are definitely going up in value, especially if they're complete in the box. And then here we have a Super Slim PS3 for 10,000, and that box looks fairly clean, which is always a good sign. Um, you know, if you compare it to the or if you take a look at the actual hardware, I believe those scratch easily too. But here we have the N64 with the expansion pack for 7,000, and it's always nice to see Sega hardware. We have some Dreamcast starting in at 7,000 yen. And look at that one for 8,000. It's super, uh, almost fully on uh, with its original color there. As far as I can tell anyway. And 6,000 yen for the Model 2 Sega Saturn. They had a pair of those. Well, they actually had three with the third one unfortunately being discolored, but it was coming in at 4,000 yen. All of those include a warranty. They have all the cables and, and one controller. And then here we have the PSP Go. Now, this one was a little bit scuffed, and it's kind of hard to see on video there, but that one was definitely tempting considering that those, you know, in the box can go as high as like 30,000 yen, which is crazy. But the PSP Go, definitely an awesome little handheld. We got some more PS4s in the box, and then this beautiful machine, the 20 gig launch model PS3 for 20,000 yen, and we have another PS3 coming in at 8,000 yen, but it's all about this uh, 20 gig which is definitely a beautiful color. You know, it has that matte finish, whereas the 60 gig has that glossy piano finish that always scratches so easily. But definitely cool to see that one. We got a 7000 series PS1. Now the box is severely uh, sun faded as that orangey color is typically supposed to be red. But still 2000 yen for that, that's not too, too bad. Now there's gonna be a bunch of toys here, but the main focus is still on the hardware as we're not done. So let's take a look at the display case here. We have a, a top loader coming in at 8,000 yen with two controllers. 
and then up above that we have a super famicom mini for 7,000 yen which i still have not tried to this day and then what do we have there for 8,000 yen it looks like that's another top loader 6,000 for the black gamecube and 10,000 for the silver one with the game boy player so i don't know i'll leave it i'll leave up price uh prices i'll leave up to you to decide um as for me 10,000 yen i think if uh if you find it in parts it's definitely going to be slightly cheaper and you might even find it cheaper like in akihabara but still it could be convenient for some of you here we have blaze blue blast blue whatever you want to call it it's going to be the arcade stick unfortunately the tag uh, was a little bit uh peeled over 2500 yen there for the g-force uh, steering wheel and then we have what is this the super that could be a clone system i'm not really sure and then up above that we have some ring fit adventure which i'm sure is going to be like the next the next uh we uh the we uh little floorboard thing the we pad whatever you want to call it but what do we have here 3500 yen for the wii and then the wii u for 9000 yen and this is that famicom up above for 5000 yen and not too bad but unfortunately it looks like it doesn't have any of the original instruction manuals but anyhow let's take a gander here or have a look at the osts a lot of final fantasy stuff that's typically to be expected as a lot of the soundtracks are going to be iconic but here we have the 13th soundtrack for 1500 yen but definitely you know if you're coming if you're hunting for soundtracks definitely make sure to compare prices on what you're going to find on amazon but this one was definitely tempting the soundtrack to muramasa for 2000 yen which was about if i remember correctly at the time it was a uh, about 5000 or 500 yen less expensive than um purchasing it on on uh on amazon but 500 yen for halo reach definitely one you don't see every day and armored core for answer this one was definitely tempting a thousand yen this is another one that was actually uh less expensive than what it was listed at on amazon i should have picked that one up but i have enough soundtracks for the time being and then we have kof 95 this is definitely a collector's item anything neo geo is going to be definitely worthy of the collection here we have dragon ball z the journey of the seven balls which is kind of a funky title we got a tales soundtrack well a couple of them vesperia but on the whole not a not a huge huge selection of soundtracks but i'm sure if you keep digging through that section you're going to find a few more but let's go ahead and go to the junk showcase we got the splatoon joy cons and it looks like each of those is coming in at 2000 yen I believe I didn't get the price of the green one, but I believe it could have been 2,000 yen. But here we have 1,500 yen for the Wii U gamepad, and it still retains its original brilliance. 3,000 for for that Wii U, which does have a gamepad. I believe it's just missing like the power cable for the gamepad, and then all sorts of instruments. And if that's your thing, Hard Off is definitely a, a place that you should add on uh, your agenda if you're going to be visiting Japan. Same thing goes for Hi-Fi. How are you going to get this back home? Most likely through shipping. <laughs> and it could be super expensive. But I've bought so many speakers, a lot of hi-fi. And Hard Off it definitely delivers when it comes to that kind of uh for, for when it comes to that kind of stuff. A lot of lenses, cameras, and then super scopes. Each of those is coming in at a thousand yen before sales tax. And you could open those up, and typically they are complete. In fact, I recently picked one up and it was complete right down to all the little uh, printed materials. But in the back, this was my big pickup. It's going to be the Sega Dreamcast Racing Wheel at 2,000 yen. Typically, you can find this at the same price, maybe sometimes even lower with the box. But I definitely don't want the box as I don't have uh, room to store that thing. But I definitely want the Racing Wheel as the Dreamcast is full of a lot of solid arcade racers. Here we have a Super Famicom. Unfortunately, it's not a one chip. That's going to be one of the earlier models. And then here we're just kind of taking a peek through the games. We're not going to really focus too much because it's going to be a lot of the stuff that you would expect to see. A lot of first party titles, a lot of sports titles. Occasionally, you know, I still look through this stuff and I look through it in detail just because uh, sometimes you might find some pretty good stuff. I think the, the greatest um, junk bin find that I have found to date was Gunstar Heroes on the Game Boy Advance and it was a 200 yen. And then look at this. This could be definitely collectors worthy. This is going to be the demo disc for Final Fantasy 13. 
and kind of a cool looking case there. And then here we have another clone system. This one was a little bit tempting as well. I wonder what the quality of that, how that goes. But later on, I did find the, these disc system games. And I'm telling you, a lot of these sometimes do work. And sometimes they're not, t uh, you can't test them because they just don't have any disc, uh, disc systems on, on hand. So they just throw them in the junk section, you know, and they sell them as unconfirmed. And then here we are with our accessories. This is another place that's definitely worth looking through because they're going to have a whole load of AC adapters, you know, multi-taps, memory cards, um, all sorts of cables. And then um, what do we have here for the N64? We got the Rumble Pack and that's coming in at 500 yen, which isn't too, too bad. Sometimes you could find those for as low as um, 100 yen. But let's go ahead and go down the proper game aisle here. And as you can see, a lot of Wii um, accessories, a lot of Wii modes. And we're going to start at the bottom with the old N64. Now look at that. 1,500 yen before sales tax for Star Fox. And that thing was complete. I definitely would have picked that up, but the steering wheel kind of just, uh, it kind of ended things for me. <laughs> there was no room, no more room on my backpack, but that one was definitely uh, a tempting one. And this one is missing the manual, this uh, Mario Kart 64, but at 500 yen, that's not too bad. And there's a few stores in Akihabara, namely Friends, that have a lot of loose manuals as well as uh, Surugaya. So, you know, if you pick up something that's missing the manual, um, there's high chances that you will find it at one of those locations, as well as Mercari. Mercari is another great location or another online store or online um, auction site. I don't know if it's an auction site. People just list stuff and you can just buy it, but... Anyhow, you know what I'm trying to say. It's another place where you can source instruction manuals. There we go. And then we have Banjo-Kazooie. Look at this iconic uh, cover there. Super Mario 64 at 1,000 yen. That's not a bad price at all. Anyhow, let's go ahead and do a blitz of a few of the games down the game aisle.
All right, let's continue the show here. The big surprise was that Rule of Rose on the PS2 for 30,000 yen. I'm surprised that one is not in the showcase. But anyhow, let's go ahead and see what they have for Mega Drive games. Unfortunately, not a whole lot with uh, Joe Montana uh, football here coming in at 1,000 yen. But I believe it is missing the instruction manual. And it was a little bit of a shame, I guess, in regards to like the Sega games. They almost had no Saturn titles and a little bit of Sega Dreamcast games, with this one being one of the more interesting ones. I'm not really sure what this is about. I haven't seen that edition before of Skies of Arcadia, but definitely kind of cool to see it. But here we have Sonic Adventure um, International Edition, which I inc may include like all the bug fixes and may have English language support. But here we have Marvel vs. Capcom for 2000 500 yen unfortunately it had a little bit of discoloration but that's to be expected when the sun is just kind of not too far off here we have rockman 3 for 3000 yen which you know the rockman games are definitely going to be cheaper out in uh in uh kanagawa or you know around the yokohama area usually about half the price but here we're just going to be cruising seeing what they have super exevious Unfortunately, this one was missing the manual. Otherwise, I would have picked that up. But 1,000, uh, 1,500 yen. Here we have Argus by Jellico for the old Famicom. Has a little bit of writing there on the on the back. We have Super Mario USA for 1,000 yen. Typically, you could find that one complete in the box for 2,000 yen. And then here we have a severely bleached Super Mario Bros. 3. We got Super Mario Land, which was also in the junk section at um, 100 yen. They even had Game Gear games, you know, Bare Knuckle 2 coming in at 2,200 yen. And a pretty solid lineup of Super Famicom games. You know, we have Area 88. We have uh, Chomakai Muda Final Fight 2 Part 1. Definitely a lot of great titles there for the Super Famicom. And they also had everything, um, a lot of Rockman titles. Rockman titles never fail to appear at the old hard off. But here we have uh, Goemon. We have... The, grand, the Great Adventure and then uh, going on 64. We have a lot of first party titles. Again, a lot of what you're going to expect, uh, what you can expect to see at your old hard off. But not a bad selection, especially of, uh, not a bad selection and variety. But here we have Sonic Colors for 1,500 yen on the old Wii. What else do they have? Metal Slug uh, Complete or Anthology. Now, it's saying that the instruction manual is a bit damaged, but for 4,000 yen, that's not too bad. I recently saw it for the PS2 for 3,500 yen, so that one seems to be going down in value. And I have no idea what this could be, but if you're a completionist for Wii games, that's definitely one you should add on your list. And then here is just an assortment of accessories. Sometimes this is worth looking through because you never know what you'll find. Um, sometimes they have some pretty good deals on PSP batteries and cables. Like this cable for like the Mega Drive and uh, Neo Geo PC Engine for 600 yen. That's actually not too bad. And I believe that's a little bit lower than what you could expect to see on Amazon. But here we have a Kirby game for the DS. Now the DS, uh, a great little handheld with a rich, rich library. But it's one that I've kind of neglected, at least the library, in the last few years. And I don't know if I will get too deep into the DS collecting, but... Definitely a lot of great games on there. I had fun uh, back in the day playing the old DS. And there was a time where I actually preferred the DS over the PSP. But look at this Somnier game. See, all sorts of crazy software on the on the DS. And then here we have our Pokemon games for the, uh, for the 3DS, which I believe do support full English uh, language. And we have New Super Mario Bros. 2 for 1,000. Typically, you could find that one for 500 yen. But still, you know whatever it is what it is let's just continue on here what do we have this uh animal crossing with the amiibo for 3,000 yen and then we have our switch titles now the switch ps4 ps5 that's going to be the big heavy movers at most locations whether it be book off hard off whatever metroid dread here which i still have not played and it's coming in at 3,000 yen but if if switch is uh the main thing that you're hunting for you know if you're coming to japan you're going to be visiting i would stick to like the city because you know it's current gen it's the flavor of the month every month for the last few months and akihabara is definitely gonna gonna have a lot more options but here we go with our ps3 titles we got kof 13 we have metal gear rising revengeance 
I have st I have yet to play that game. I have a copy of it, but it's been sitting in my backlog for quite some time. Bioshock Infinite, the complete edition. I was meaning to pick this one up, completely forgot, but at a thousand yen, I felt that that was a pretty decent deal. But not a bad selection of uh, PS3 games. And there was a few uh, there was a few standout ones like this one here, the Dungeons and Dragons collection, coming in at nine thousand yen. And for the old Xbox, not a lot of titles there. In fact, there's only three, with one of them being the North American version to Seven Days to Die. Could be a good one, that one. And then we have Biohazard RE4. Unfortunately, I haven't played that one yet. We have Ender Lilies, which is also available on the Switch and, and uh, I believe Steam. Here we have Odin Sphere. We got some JoJo's Eyes of Heaven. Which I wonder if this is like the same as the arcade version that's currently uh, in arcades. But here's a few toys, uh, a few toys, and guys, like these combo places, they offer quite a bit. So you could spend hours here, especially if you're looking all through, like throughout the store. Like these speakers, look at this beautiful uh, JBLs coming in at ninety thousand yen. We got some Wharfdale diamonds. I have a pair of these back in the states. Not a bad speaker. Not a bad speaker at all. And look at this, Technics, 20,000 yen for that uh, um, that receiver, stereo receiver, stereo amplifier, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of great stuff at this location. I'm, I mean, I'm just showing you guys a small portion of what they have to offer. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and there's definitely more to come. So stay tuned, and we'll see you soon. Ciao.